Hello guys. Well, what we're going to be talking about today is masks. Applying masks in Affinity Photo version 2. I'll do it on the desktop and then on the iPad, which I've got here somewhere. My trusty little iPad. There we go. Now, we're not talking about those kind of masks. Lovely oriental lady there with the typically oriental mask. But we won't be doing those because what we're going to be doing is masking something out so that we can see what we're doing. Something like that. Now we've got two there. And there's a girl missing from that one. The girl's in there. The fire extinguisher's gone and just the girl left. We'll also add some uh, outer glow to that and a few other effects and things as we go along. And I'll do it on the iPad and the desktop. So, let's get right to it, shall we? So, let's get right to it, as I just said. First, we're going to load an image from the stock studio. Let's go to stock. Now, that's where we found our mask. But what we want is a fire extinguisher. Now, there we go, and there's our fire extinguisher that I showed you in the last image. We'll just drag that straight onto the canvas. Look at that. Nice size, white background. And the photo by Public Domain Pictures. There we go, it's on Pixabay. We can close that down. Just let me select that one there. And that's all we need to start with. What I might do is just use the hand to move him over there a little bit. And then go back to that. And you can see where I'm going with the, uh, with the mouse pointer, which is nicely enlarged for me there we go now we're in the layers panel we've got our first image and that's the one we want so background now what do we do with this we've got them selected so we can make a mask out of it now over here on the left is the selection brush tool you can see that right on the left there i'm i'm trusting yes it's selected and it's got a crosshair the width is 10 pixels. You don't want to go too big. You can see up there, top left hand side, the width is 10 pixels. The mode at the moment is, add, it's the add mode. It's just hiding behind the mouse pointer there. And next to it is subtract, which we'll also use in a moment. So let's go and add, paint down there, paint down there. I've got the brush quite small at the moment, but that's okay. I don't want it too large because you can take great swathes of things and it becomes really difficult to create the mask. So what I'm doing is going around the fire extinguisher. Bit of a fiddly job, I know. But now there's a bit there. We've just got to add that on. Now we can come down there. There we go, that selected the whole piece of that tube. We've got the bottom there. Now, let's go down and around there. It's very tempting to make that brush size a lot bigger. But, believe me, I'll try it out. You don't have to take my word for it. Make that brush nice and large and you can swipe over this and you can add bits of the fire extinguisher to your heart's content but you will see how it takes itself out there. So you really don't need a broad brush. Unless perhaps you're in politics, they're always going on about having a broad brush. There we go. Now I'm just gonna get rid of that little bit down there. We're getting there and you can see where it's filling that in. It depends on what you're doing, just how picky you've got to be about this. Okay, there's a bit we can see just there. Some of that lettering you can just paint over that. That'll be all right. That'll go away. There we go. Now we're getting there. Some there. There's a bit on the edge there. You can see, although it's quite a large crosshair, its effective area is reasonably small. 
it's worth experimenting with brush sizes and some of the other things that are there as well. Soft edges, snap to edges, uh, all layers refine. Up the top there, I was reading that on the toolbar. Now we've got some more pixels there and some pixels just there. You can see I'm leaning in quite close here so I can I can um, see what I'm doing. Now I think I've pretty much... Oh, there's some more squiggly lines there. Crawling ants. That's what they look like. There we go. That's moved those ants right out. There's some more there. Just paint over that one. You don't need to get really fine in that handle because we've nearly got it. Now, the next thing we do, we've selected the fire extinguisher. You go up to refine and you can see there, because we were careful going around the edges, there's a bit of an edge there that I could probably clean up, but I don't know if I'll worry about that because it doesn't matter. Now we go down here next, and you can see down towards the bottom, there's the output and the selection. Just tap on the selection. We're going to output it to a mask. Now you can do it there. Or before we do that, let me go over here and you can see the pointer. There's a mask option there. Or right across here and up to the top in the layers panel, you can click on, you can, don't forget to apply here first, but you may as well go to selection and select a mask and then when you apply it will create a mask and the background will disappear. I just wanted to show you there's an option there to create a mask and there's an option there to create a mask. Let's have a look at it. There we go. New mask layer. You click on that, same effect. Down here, click on that, mask, same effect. But we'll just click anywhere and that ignores that. There's your first mask. And you can see you've got it there. There's your mask drop down and there's the mask there. Too easy. Now, what we're going to have to do here, don't forget to do this because you can lose your work really easily. Go to save as. Now, I'm putting it all on Dropbox. Same place. Um, M-A-S-K-I-N-G. Masking tutorial. Too easy. Just save that. And there we go. Now you can do that with anything. Now let me show you what I mean by that. We'll leave that one there. And in fact, we'll hide. You can see how it's hidden. Okay. But what I'm going to do is go to the stock studio. Right there. And this time, instead of fire extinguisher, I'm going to type in girl. And that's the one down here that I want. So let's just drag that out. It's a new layer. Now I should have clicked on that and made it the right size to start with. But let's go back to the layers panel and there she is there. And you can see it's far too big. But now I'm going to modify that. Click on the on the on the move tool, top left. Select that layer so that she's selected. Now you can't see the boundaries of that image because it's six thousand pixels by four thousand pixels. So we've got to modify that. Go down there and click on the lock, which I can't see there. That's that's let's hope that's working. Okay, now. You can see there where it's going to center the thing. We want it centered in the middle, right there. There's a white dot there, but there's the center mark there. At the moment, perhaps that's a little bug. Now I'm just reducing one and it reduces all of them, but it's going to be a very slow process. You can see because that chain's locked, that's going down too slowly. So what I want to do is cut that in half and just type in 1500. Zero, zero. That's reduced its size. Now there it is there. And that's all we want. We just want the girl. So perhaps I can go 
to 2000. Now that's big enough to work with and it completely blanks out the other one. Perfect. That's just what we want. Now click anywhere and it gets rid of the boundaries because what we're going to do now is exactly the same as we did before. Click on the selection brush tool. We've still got 10 pixels there. We're still on the add mode. And we can go around. The girl, this will only take a moment. There's not much detail there that we're pulling out. There we go. Around that edge there. Down the arm. Around the edge of the head. And a little bit of hair there. We may or may not get that. There we go. And around the edge. If you watch any of my other videos, and I do hope you do, you'll notice that I've used this particular image on a couple of occasions. You can see those little crawling ants across that shirt. They're very hard to see on this shirt. But there we go. Some on the inside there. There we go, and you see how that's jumped right around with that red. Oh, don't forget the foot. Yeah, down that leg, down that leg. Grab the foot and the shoe and just do that little bit there. You can fiddle around with that and get that really exact if you like. Now I'm leaning in pretty close here, sorry about that. But there's a little bit there. Now, fortunately, we seem to have the inside just there is selected out, so we don't have to go and do the subtract, I don't think. If you've inadvertently got all that as well as, as part of the selection, you just go to subtract and select that one, and you can do the same thing by brushing on it and deselect the little bits you want. Now, same as before, that's pretty good. That's not a bad selection. Go to Refine. Now, you can see there if you've missed any obvious big bits, like the first time I did this, I left the shoe off, the ankle and shoe completely. And you can see there if it was missing, you can see straight away. Okay, you don't need to adjust any of that. I'm going to make life easy for myself by going to Selection, select the Output, that's the output there, right? As is a mask, and then apply the mask. And there we go. Transparent background. Okay. There we go. Did you see what I did then? I just dragged that mask inside. Let's turn that off. I just dragged the mask inside. Let me undo that. There's the mask there. There's that there. Now, for some reason, when I created that mask, possibly because I've got that one in a layer with it, so it's getting confused. Just dragged it inside there, so it's part of it. That one there, it's beside it. Although, if I look there, it's below it. That one there is now below it, so that's why they're like that. Now, that one there, because it's in there, I can rasterize the both of those, it becomes one image. You can see that there, there's no arrow. That one there, do that, it's one image, or it will be now. And there we go. That one's rasterized, that one's rasterized. Now there's the fire extinguisher behind it. Select the girl. Now let me go back and Open Recent, Fire Extinguisher with Mask, there's one I did previously. 
There's the girl on her own. Move the whole panel around. There's the fire extinguisher on its own. Move the whole panel around. Put them together. Move the whole panel around. You can see the girl fits inside the fire extinguisher. But if I do then this one, the girl's larger than the fire extinguisher. And that's what we wanted. Okay, now we'll move on from there and do some extra really nice things we can do with either one of those or both of them together. Of course, you can turn one off, turn the other one on. Fire extinguisher is a bit boring. <laughs> but you can take a photo and do anything you like with it. So let's pause there. Okay, second part. We're going to put some colours around this. A colour gradient. Now, we don't want to just do Gaussian blur or something like that. Something really ordinary. So, we'll select our layer that the girl is on. And we're going to add a fill layer. A new fill layer. We'll start with that. And, it's, and it should be white. If it's not, we'll just make sure it is white. And you can see it blanks out the whole thing. Well, we don't quite want that because we want the girl on top of that layer. So, we just drag it down to the bottom. And there she is. Now we can affect this. We've got that one selected. And we go over to the gradient tool. Make sure you've got the layer, the fill layer selected. Select the gradient tool. Select the type linear. That's the one we want. Now we can go there and keeping hold of the mouse, just drag it right down to the bottom. Make sure that bottom one's selected. You can tell that because it's the larger of the circles. Now we go and select black for the bottom. Go back and select the top one. And make sure that's white. Now you can adjust that boundary, of course, up and down with that one there. Or you can add some other boundaries in there and modify that slightly. But that'll do for the time being. Okay. Now we're going to do some really nice things with this. Just go back and select the move pointer so I don't accidentally um, modify something. So <clears throat> now that we've got our background gradient in place, we'll alter that shortly in any case, but I want to put a multicolored blur around the image of the girl, not just out here, like a Gaussian blur but they're only single colours. What I want to do is put a multicoloured Gaussian blur around this. So go over to the image of the, the girl there, and we're going to duplicate that image. Here we go. There's that one there. Now we've got two exactly the same. So we just hide that one for the moment. <coughs> go down to this one, and holding the Command key down on the Mac, just click on that, and you can see it brings back the uh, the selection, which is what we want. Now go over to the gradient tool on the left hand side, select the gradient tool, bring it over here, and holding the mouse key down, bring the gradient down, keeping it on the line to the bottom line, and that will turn red as you can see it there. Let the mouse go. Now you've got a nice little gradient there, and it's of course the usual grey down to black, but we're going to change that. So the bottom one is black, the top one is white, so we'll select the top one, and let's make the top one, we'll change the colour, select the colour over here to red, which I'd used before. Now there's a nice red. Now we'll go down the bottom here. The bottom one's in highlight now, and we're going to make the bottom blue. So let's select a nice bright blue. There we go. Now, we've got the blue one. Let's make the center one another color. What about a nice, well, I guess that's the turquoise, isn't it? There we go. That's pretty close. Maybe about there. That's better. Now we can move that top one up a little bit, so the top's, I don't know, moved the red up a bit far, didn't it? Let's bring the red down a bit. 
we can bring the blue down a little bit not much but just a little bit there we go now we've got that there like that that layer there is blanked out let's go back and select the whole thing go command d to deselect all that now that one there we want to use a live filter go down the bottom here to live filters and select gaussian blur now the radius we want to bring out the radius you can see that's going really blurry that's what we want there it is there now we need that layer back in place just to hide that you can see around there we've got a nice blur around there now different colors that's gaussian blur in different colors which is exactly what we want now let me pause that for a moment now the last thing i want to show you um, for this exercise we've got our gaussian blur there and that looks very nice we could change that slightly you could make it darker you could make it brighter but we've still got our rather dark little plain background but that's okay now we'll go to this one here the, and let's go down to live filters again let's set hourglass on the bottom we'll scroll right down to the bottom of that and we'll go to lighting now this is a very powerful tool you can see immediately it's just plunked it in the screen and it's changed the whole thing now you could have that almost anywhere you wanted you can move that center point around you can see the light is changing as we go now you can have it from the top or you can have it from the bottom so let's put the focal point about there and we'll swing that around there and you can see how the light is moving up the model spread those out that way a little bit bring that one up there and bring that up there that's got you can see the foot goes into darkness or so we can keep that in the light and there we go now that's that's changed the um, gaussian blur effect quite a bit and you can see that the red halo around the shirt it's almost like there's red dust coming off the shirt it's changed that image quite dramatically really you can see there are lots of um, options in the live lighting i i won't go into those now i'll leave you, that for you to experiment with but for now I reckon that looks pretty good. That's certainly different than the average little photo we had a moment ago. Let me just click over there. We'll go up to there. And that removes the, the um, studio panel there. And you can see the live filter there and the gaussian blur filter there lighting and we can just put those up the side like that now the only thing that's left of course is that one there if you want to change the background and we can it's command click and you can see that's affected the whole thing there let's just click on that and that's back you can see that's on there that was command click on that layer that gets all of that layer selected then we went back over to the gradient tool and affected that now that's top is white that bottom one is currently black we could make that almost any color you like but what matches the colors we've got on there you need to be fairly careful with that remember we can always go back to the black so let me click in that viva magenta color that's there 
and that's the color of the month. That's the Pantone color of the month, as near as we can get it on here. Viva Magenta. Now, that's certainly more impressive than plain black. Now, we can bring that down a little bit, tone that down a little bit, because it's quite startling otherwise. We've still got what we need. That's perfect. White. We've got our Gaussian blur in colours around the girl, and our background is now Pantone colour of the month, which is Viva Magenta. It's not exactly it, because I didn't go to the Pantone colours and change it, but that's pretty close, and I think that'll do. Let me go to File and Save. We've already got it, Masking Tutorial. Remember to save your work as you go. We're still, of course... <laughs> Got our trusty old fire extinguisher down there, just in case something goes wrong. But you can't see that, so we can just leave that for the time being. And there we go. Oops, I can still see crawling ants around the edge, so just Control D will get rid of those. Perfect. Now I can save it again. And there we are. Lovely. Now that's a very nice image. That's better than the plain image that we had, or that we started with. You can do that with anything. So, that'll do for this exercise. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share it with all your friends. And remember to subscribe, if you will. Click on the like button. Um, and click on the bell if you need to be reminded when new videos, or if you would like to be reminded, when I put new videos up on my YouTube channel.